Hello my wonderful friends, Megas with you on a beautiful day in Asha. This is an important message guys and if you're new to this channel it's no mistake you found this today. Before we start I want us all to put up a prayer for our wonderful friend Richard. He's always with us every single day my friend so for him not to be here I know he's going through it. So let's send him love and prayers and let's see him living in peace and health and protection and provision. Let's see all good God things in Richard's life right now. My friends, I get a lot of messages, you know, and uh, sometimes they're not very nice. And what's funny is we only teach an all loving God. That's our message. God is perfect love and he has no attributes of the evil spirit. He can't hate and get angry and kill and people they get so angry at that and they hate me so much for that message and and I, I got a message the other day and uh, it, it, it sometimes it drains me my friends and it's not that I get angry or hateful towards them it, it breaks my heart my friends because I was there before and I know exactly what they're feeling and I want to talk about that and, and what I discovered, because this is going to set someone free today. My friends, before we start, though, I have to ask you something. There's a bunch of you that you, you're on the bell notification, and this message came up. You're watching it. My friends, you, you got to hit that like button for me. I know it seems silly for a spiritual teacher to ask you that, but it moves us up in that algorithm. And if YouTube sees all these views and low likes, my friends, they don't promote our videos and our message of love doesn't get out there and it's something so easy for you to do so will you please start trying to remember to do that for me my friends it's going to help our cause and this message needs to get to the world so my friends I want to talk about it was a born again Christian and that's the religion I was raised Christian my friends and I want to say this I love Jesus with all my heart I consider myself a Zoroastrian Christ follower if I have to put it in a words we're so much more than that and you know that but it's something that people can wrap their mind around my friends the Zoroastrians they were the magi they're the ones that heard from God and worshiped him brought him gold frankincense and and myrrh they were Christ followers 2,000 years ago my friends and there's still a sect of us that still do not all but we do and we love Jesus but but I always say it Mark Twain said it that Jesus wouldn't be a Christian today because they're not Christ followers. They use his name, but they don't follow his teachings anymore. It's become a business. So my friend, I want to share my story with you. And then I'm going to give you the beautiful message of the Holy Spirit, Asha, that came to me and saved my life. But I need to ask you to do something. If you don't have time to watch this whole thing through, to get to the light at the end of the tunnel, please turn it off right now and come back to it later because I don't want to leave you in a dark place. But I went through a dark time, my friends, to get to that light. My friends, I actually got OCD and depression from my journey. There was times I would lay in bed with a pillow over my head for days just trying to work out these thoughts in my head because I was afraid of God. I was afraid maybe I blasphemed my friends and the religion, the set of beliefs I was brought up within, it, it, it caused mental illness my friends and it's kind of funny as I'm thinking that but it's true my friends. It, it, it drove me crazy. And only God could have saved me. And I was one of those kids. I, I read the Bible cover to cover. I didn't know any, none of my friends, no one, most adults that I knew, even in the church, didn't read the Bible like I did from cover to cover. My friends, I had all the commentaries on all the different books trying to understand my friends. And I would go into these deep depressions. It was hell on earth my friends. I'd be in my room just reading and trying to understand how this is God good and how I fit into it. And my friends, I, I ended up going to Bible college and, and, and that's when it really started to fall apart because I started asking questions 
that I always had and they couldn't answer them. And they got angry and hateful at me and they threw me out, <laughs> my friends. They didn't want me there. And I wasn't trying to be disruptive. I just wanted to know. And I think it made them mad because they didn't know. They, they had those same questions and they were scared to question and think about it because they're afraid they would blaspheme or upset the angry God in the sky. My friends, and there's so many stories. I'm not going to go through them all. I want to get to the light at the end of the tunnel. But you need to understand because maybe you've been there. So I mean from Genesis all the way through, my friends. In Genesis, I started studying the heroes of the Bible. Judah, one of the strongest tribes. The man of Judah. Read his story. My friends, he, he had three sons. And, and, and the first one, uh, it, it said, angered the Lord. So the Lord slew him. My, my friends, then, then the second son, uh, he wanted him to get with his first son's wife and have children. But he, he was uh, s spreading his semen on the sheets instead of impregnating his brother's wife because he didn't want to. It said the Lord slew him. My friends, this is right off the bat in Genesis. And I'm thinking, uh, you know, God is supposed to be all love. Why would he kill for so someone for not impregnating his brother's wife? You know, and, and so these things are starting to build. And then he ends up sleeping with that daughter himself because, get this, she had a veil over his face and she thought he was a, she was a prostitute. My friends, well, how does that make it okay for him? Then he blamed her. Well, look how she is dressed like a prostitute. What did he want to do? He wanted to burn her to get rid of the evidence. My friends, my gosh, that's like a, uh, you know, a horrible crime movie that we see. And this is supposed to be Judah, one of the heroes of the Bible. Then I looked up Moses. My friends, he told him to go and kill the men, women, and the children and get the spoils. And my friends, this is, I'm a, a child here, a young, and then into a young man trying to understand this God that's supposed to be loving. He, he's doing these things, telling Moses to kill men, women, and children, and the soldiers. I mean, they're soldiers. They're, they're bred to kill, and they couldn't kill the women and children. It was rubbing against their conscience. And Moses told him, you override your conscience and kill those men and women. Bring them here now and kill them like the Lord told you to. My friends, and, and I'm thinking, how has it got to the point where man has put in these attributes into God that, that we wouldn't even do as humans? Most of us, we couldn't kill men, women, and children my friends, Joshua, another hero of the Bible. Achan stole some of the silver. Joshua calls him in. says, tell me what you've done, son. That bothers me that he called him son. Like he's taking him into his conference. Tell me what you've done, son. Like there could be forgiveness there. He told him, it's true, I did keep some of the silver. Joshua brought out his wife and children and killed them before the whole tribe. My friends, I showed him, don't touch the Lord's silver and my friends this stuff is haunting me because in my heart of hearts i'm thinking well that can't be right how can that be god the highest principle of good to kill a man's wife and children for a, a crime that he did my friends it goes against all justice and reason and do you know what they would tell me god's ways are higher than our ways my friends that's not higher that's lower frequency my friends, God isn't worse than we are. They meant higher, more love. He's more peace. He's more compassion, more kind is what that's supposed to mean. Not that his ways are so ridiculous we can't understand them, that they're so foul and cruel. My friends, and this is what I'm being taught as a kid. And it's causing me to get OCD, to get depression. Because if, if the loving Father is like that, do we stand a chance? My friends, the story of the ark, they're carrying the ark, and they're not allowed to touch it. They have to hold it with poles. It starts to fall. One man keeps it from falling and dashing into pieces. It said the Lord slew him for stopping it, for saving it from falling. The Lord slew him? What if they would have dropped? Would the Lord just slew them all? Can you win with this God? My friends, and now I'm having guilt as a child thinking these thoughts. Because I was also told, if you have a bad thought about God, that you blasphemed, and then you'll go to hell to burn for eternity. What loving Father 
would do these things and then burn you for eternity. You couldn't win, my friends, and I couldn't enjoy life while my other friends were out playing and just thinking, what am I going to be when I grow up in sports? I'm lost in this hell in my own mind created by a religion of a God that's not that good, my friends. And then I have those, those thoughts, you can't think that. You can't think that, so I try harder, my friends. Then, what do they tell you? That, that God's so angry. He can't even love you because you're born dirty. My friends, we've seen this played out in the human realm, haven't we? It's so sad. People brought up in those religions and they see their kids have these different sins or things that are passing their very DNA even from them and they, they can't even look at their child or love them until they get cleaned up. You're sinful. You're dirty. You're foul. I can't love you until you get cleaned up, my friends. That's not how the loving Father is. And most humans aren't even that way unless they're brought up in these religions that pollute their hearts and minds. My friends, and then what do they tell you? That, that the angry God sacrificed His Son to save you. And now He doesn't see you. He only sees Jesus when He looks at you. My friends, let me tell you something. Jesus did come to this earth, but He came to show you the loving Father. When James and John said, let's call down from heaven, a fire from heaven like Elias did on this town that didn't receive our message. Jesus said, you don't know what spirit you're of. When they said, let's stone this woman caught in adultery like Moses says to do, he said, forgive her. My friends, he was showing them the loving father. He told them, you're of your father, the devil, because he's angry and hateful and a murderer. My friends, so how has Christianity gone back to Judaism? They've thrown out the teachings of the Christ. They've made Him an animal sacrifice. He is not an animal sacrifice. He never, ever, ever, ever said that. You want to know how to be saved? Listen to what the Christ said and no one else. He never said that. My friends, He is not an animal sacrifice. You cannot get life out of death. You cannot get a godly attribute out of an evil spirit attribute. Hating, killing, murder, slaughter does not get you closer to God. Getting you closer to God is what the Christ taught, that you hold His Word. What is the Word? It's the perfect Creator's perfect idea. It's the Asha, the very Holy Spirit of God, the perfect Creator, had a perfect idea, and it's unconditional, perfect love, and peace, and joy, and kindness, and compassion, and you hold that, and you become one with God, and that day they shall know that we are one. My friends, God is the loving Father. Oh, I hope someone's getting this right now. And then what do they tell you? You go to the end of the book, my friends, and they tell you it's, it's all going to end with destruction and fire, my friends, and war. Well, my friends, I'm here to tell you that's not how this story ends because the children of light, the children of God will prevail because we're going to hold love and we're going to run out the war and the hate and the destruction. We don't accept that, my friends. And, and then what do they, and this is the part that got me, my friends. I want to say this right. Here's how it was presented to me. Now I understand there's different interpretations of this, and we're going to get into that. But but in the very last book, what does it say? It says that Jesus will come on a horse with all of his followers behind him to kill all the inhabitants on the earth with a sword until the blood rises up to the horse's mouth, my friends. Think about that for a minute. If you allow yourself to think. So, so your loved ones are up in heaven right now. How did they get there? Right? It's supposed to be because I turned the other cheek. I loved the enemy. I did right. I was a good loving person. And now you've been up in heaven for thousands of years. And he says, hey everyone, get to come together. Okay? This is going to be a little rough. 
I, I know I'm the Prince of Peace, and I told you to be love and peace and joy, but we all need to get on a horse and ride down from heaven to the earth and slaughter men, women, and children until the blood rises to the mouth of my measuring horse here. My friends, I, I can't picture my 90-pound grandma getting on a horse with a sword and stabbing men, women, and children until the blood rises to the mouth of the horse. That doesn't sound like heaven to me. How do you go from perfect peace and love and bliss so we got to get on a horse and kill men, women, and children, and bloodshed, and war, and hate. My friends, do you do it with a smile and the love? Does Jesus say, okay, everyone, gather behind me, stay behind my horse, follow my Prince of Peace banner? My friends, and, and, and they tell you, you can't question this nonsense. The very last words on it is say, don't change one word of this. Are you a lose your salvation? What a way to leave you. My friends, all that other trouble and turmoil, now they're, they're telling you, what if you misinterpret this? And then, my friends, as a young man, I'm thinking, well, my God, my pastor taught me it meant this. I've heard another pastor say it's an analogy. Another pastor say this. Well, what if I believed it the wrong way? Well, and then I'd have bad thoughts because I'm thinking, this is ridiculous. This isn't God. This isn't good. My friends, and, and there would go the pillow on top of my head for days thinking, oh no, I blasphemed. Oh no, God is mad. But guess what I found, my friends? Holy Spirit came to me. Asha came to me and revealed to me the loving Father. And it resonated in my heart of hearts. Oh my God, He's really good. He doesn't hate war, kill, get angry. You cannot be separated from Him. They lied to you. God and man shall not be separated. Period. They can't do it. There's no force strong enough to separate you from God if you've been worrying about that. My friends, you and God will be together. You and love and peace and joy. And I'll tell you what, those of you here are absolute heroes. My friends, to be changing this world, to be changing the frequency back to the loving Father, to stand up for God good when it seems like everyone and everything is against you. Their religions, their politics, my friends, it all seems to be fighting you. But I'll tell you what, it's no fight at all. It's like walking into a dark room and flipping the light switch. My friend, you are light. You are love. And when you walk into a room, light walks into the room and the darkness flees. When you walk into the room, love walks into the room and hate, fear, and greed flees in every direction. My friends, we are the children of God and we are here to wake up this world to change the frequency. And you know what? We have no enemy. My friends, because no one can fight God good. No one can fight love. No one can fight truth. And when this truth comes out, if people stay here long enough to hear it, my friends, the lie and illusion just disappears, even if they're not ready to accept it. Maybe they're still at that place that they think, oh, I don't want to anger the mean, angry God, my friends. But it's, it's starting in their heart, and they're going to start hearing God speaking to them, saying, yes, that's right, I am the loving Father. And I don't do those horrible, horrible things. I am love and peace and joy. And you are not a dirty, filthy sinner. You are my child and I love you. And you came here with a purpose. To transmute this world. To change your very DNA. Maybe you were born with what they call sin, anger issues, perversions, things passed in your very genes from grandparents to parents to you. My friends, but you're going to transmute that with love and truth and you're not gonna pass it on to the next generation. And you know what, they're gonna vote different because they're gonna think different. My friends, there's a beautiful evolution taking place, my friends, and it's going to get better and better and better, and it's not going to get worse and worse and worse. I prophesy, my friends, that good and light and God and perfect love wins.